Okay, so for this afternoon, we'll be tackling is the uh, uh, historical survey of uh, literary criticism. Okay, so we will now be focusing first on the classical criticism. So when we talk of uh, classical criticism, we are referring to the works of Plato and uh, Aristotle. So we'll be looking at how they um, how they uh, view literature during their time. Okay, so the following are the uh, topics that we'll be discussing: Plato's theory of mimesis and his objection to poetry. Aristotle's defense of poetry in his concept of tragedy. So, diba, uh, as I mentioned to you previously, that there is a conflict between Plato and Aristotle when they look at literature. So, for this afternoon, we will be looking at why Plato is, uh, has an objection to poetry and how Aristotle defended poetry. And uh, Aristotle's definition and explanation of tragedy and why is it that Plato became, became interested on, on tragedy and uh, the six formative elements in tragedy are Stoto's explanation of plot, character, and tragic hero and the rest of elements in which uh, Aristotle believes are part of the tragedy and of course the function of tragedy. So these are the things that we'll be uh, tackling for this afternoon. Okay, so I want you to look at this quote, this uh, painting by Raphael. So on this painting, you will see here our, uh, Plato. So this is Plato, and this is uh, Aristotle. Okay, so I want you to screenshot. Screenshot nyo muna to because ma later on, uh, we will be discussing why the images of Aristotle is like this and Plato. So why is it that, just to give you a hint, why is it that Plato is pointing his fingers up and why is it that Aristotle is uh, pointing his fingers on the ground? So it has something to do with what we will be discussing this afternoon. Uh, so that you will be uh, particular with the painting by Raphael. So it was painted by Raphael. So just to present to us the, the differences on the way Plato and Aristotle look at things. Okay? So what we'll be discussing first is Plato. And when we talk of Plato, just to give you a brief background of Plato, so he was born on approximately, it is not the exact date of his birth, but approximately based on some studies that he was born sometime in 428 and 427 BCE at Athens, Greece, and died at uh, 348 and 347 BCE, of course, it's still in Athens. So, approximately he was 80 plus he can play so when he died. So he is an ancient uh, Greek philosopher and known to be one of the best stu students of uh, Socrates. And he is also known as the teacher of Aristotle and founder of the Academy. So when we talk of the Academy, it is the school. Okay, so they are referring to the school when we talk of the Academy. So Academy. So it was founded by Aristotle. And uh, he is best known as the author of philosophical works of unparalleled influence. So later on, as we go through with our lecture, why is it that unparalleled influence ng kanyang mga writings? And he is known for his uh, work called The Republic. So on this uh, on this lecture, we'll be focusing on the content of the Republic na sinulat ni Plato in order for us to understand what were the views of Plato when it comes to the literature. Okay, so 
Ito ang tatandaan nyo lang rito when we talk of uh, literary criticism. And when we talk of Plato and literary criticism, this uh, philosophy, rejecting the material world. Okay, so Plato is known for this philosophy, rejecting the material world. So when we talk of the material world, it was, uh, again, as I mentioned, it was discussed in one of his works, The Republic. Okay? rejecting the material world. So according to Plato, there are two realms. When we talk of realm, we're pertaining to a world. Okay? So there are two realms according to, to Plato. So in, in, this, in this world, there are two worlds. The material world and the realm of ideas. So ito yung pinagagalingan ni Plato when he dealt with uh, uh, literature during that time. Okay, so what is a material world? So, kumbaga, these are the physical things that are perceived by our senses. Yung nakikita natin, naamoy natin, malalasahan natin, narinig na tahawakan, these are material things. So, this material things is part of the material world. So, let's say for example, um, when you, yung example niya nga dyan, dito sa kanyang The Republic, when you make a chair or when you make a bed, these are part of the material world. Okay? So, whatever that are perceived by our senses, those five senses, so those are part of the material world. Okay? So, sabi niya, a material thing can always change. Just use a big enough sledgehammer. Philosophically speaking, gusto niyo sabihin dyan, kapag halimbawa may ginawa kang, uh, uh, ginawa kang bed, katulad doon na nabalik na sa Republic, kapag ang isang tao gumawa ng bed, Pwede mo naman yung sirain ay right away at pwede ka pang uli gumawa ng another bed. So, this material thing can be changed. So, it can be easily changed. So, this means that the material world will never be perfect, always corrupted and corruptible. So, yun lang. Okay? So, isa, isa ito sa mga uh, point of view ni, ni, ni Plato when, it, when, it, when he is talking of the material world. Any physical things that are perceived our senses can be changed right away. Okay? Pwede siya mabago. Okay? At dito, ito yung um, for Plato, the realm of ideas uh, for him is different from a material world. Sabi niya, the realm of ideas is different. All material things are part of the species, a type, and a kind. Okay? Halimbawa, uh, yung mga bagay na ginagawa ng mga tao, those are part of different kinds of objects or, or of things that we are perceiving. So, what defines that species is a set of essential properties. So, pasamantala lang siyang ginagamit ng mga tao, but later on, nawawala at nawawala rin. Okay? So, base doon sa kanyang mga konsepto ng material world and the realm of ideas, doon siya humugot ngayon kung papaano niya tingnan naman ang isang literature. Okay. So, according to him, ideas are the ultimate reality. Okay, again, ideas are the ultimate reality. Unang-una, ano bang trabaho ni Plato? Di ba isa siyang philosopher? So, when we talk of philosophy, it is uh, something to do with, with the study of wisdom. When we talk of wisdom, they're talking of, of ideas. So, si Plato, sabi niya, ideas are inevitable. It is the only truth and the absolute truth that uh, we have here on Earth. And it cannot be uh, easily broken. Okay? Art imitates idea, and so it is an imitation of reality. Yung, when you talk of mimesis, mimesis, mimetic, it means imitation. Okay? So, yun yung theory of mimesis na pinatawag natin dito. Mimesis, mimetic, imitation. So, sabi ni Plato, ang isang art daw is just an imitation of ideas. If it is an imitation of ideas, therefore, it now becomes a material, it now becomes a part of a material world. When it becomes part of the material world, it's no longer the reality. Okay, ito isa, isa, isa to sa mga part noong The Republic. Eh. So, sabi niya rito, In what of the maker of the bed, were you not saying that he too 
P2 makes not the idea which, according to our view, is the essence of the bed, but only a particular bed. So then, if it doesn't make that, which is P, it cannot make true existence. So malino dito na sinabi ni Plato na kung ang isang uh, art ay ginawa ng isang artist, it that he cannot make a true existence. Because saan ba galang isang art? It comes from an idea. Okay? So, uh, ang Republic, kaya mapapas niyo parang nag-uusap, ang presentation kasi ng The Republic ay dialogue. May, ang... Si, si Plato rito, kunwari meron siyang kausap ng mga ilang mga philosophers. Dito ay think ang kausap niya ay si Socrates. So meron siyang mga kausap na iba't ibang mga philosophers dyan na nakipagpalitin uh, siya ng kanyang mga points of view. Okay? So that is an example of, uh, of, a, of a text from a uh, from the other republic. Okay. Halimbawa, the idea of bed first came in the mind of carpenter. He gave physical shape to his idea out of wood and created a bed. The painter imitated the bed of the carpenter in his picture of bed. Thus, painter's bed is twice removed from reality. Kanya yung point? Halimbawa, ako, meron akong idea, as a carpenter, meron akong idea kung ano ba ang itsura ng isang bed. So, ginawa ko, gumawa ko ng bed. Okay? So, first imitation. Yan yung unang imitation. Okay? Second imitation. Yung isang painter, pinate niya yung bed. Dinraw niya yung bed. At meron na siya ngayon isang painting. Second imitation. So, sabi niya, yung imitation niya, the more na ang isang idea ay na na-imitate, na na-imitate, nawawala na ngayon yung reality. Because according to Plato, the reality is what our mind speaks. Again, si Plato ay isang philosopher. Okay? And to have the philosophy, has something to do with, with the mind, with, with wisdom, with idea. So, kaya sa kanya, ang only reality lang ay kung ano yung ang nasa isip ng isang tao. Kapag ginawa mo yun, nawawala na ngayon yung reality. At kapag kinopy mo pa, nawawala ang reality. Ngayon, relate niya ito sa isang poetry. Okay? Halimbawa, ang isang tao ay mayroong isang experience sa buhay. Okay? So, yun yung kanyang idea. Yung expression of his idea ay yung the way he lived a life. Ngayon, may isang writer na nagsulat tungkol sa buhay niya. It means na yung uh, the way the person live a life is twice removed from a reality na. Nakukuha niyo ba yung point natin? Okay, so sinasabi niya, in short lang, na ang isang literature ay hindi nag-reflect ng isang reality. Kasi para kay Plato, para siya nagkakaroon ng dagdag bawas. Yun yung kanyang tinutulig sa, sa literature na literary works are not actually reflecting what reality is. Because there's always a tendency that those things that were written by writers were part of just their imagination. We are not actually 100% uh, sure that those which were written by the writers are the 100% accurate as, what, as to how it was experienced by the, the person who had experienced it. Okay. Another, since art serves no useful purpose in society, Plato views art as useless. Okay? Useless daw ang isang art, according to Plato. Art I neither, neither add knowledge nor intellectual value. Art is essentially deceptive and potentially dangerous. So, ito yung mga sinasabi ni Plato sa The Republic. Kasi nga, again, uh, there are, according to him, there's always a tendency that a writer is not actually imitating what the reality is. Okay, nagkakaroon doon ng mga dagdagbawa. At yung mga sinasabi nila sa literary work, 
ay uh, could corrupt the mind of the public or of the people who are reading or who are listening to literature. Listening. Bakit nasabing listening to literature? Kasi during this time, ang literature is in a form of oral tradition. Asalita. At ang kanyang pinaparinggan sa the republic ay sino? Hulaan ninyo. Ha. Oral tradition. Sino sa tingin yung pinaparinggan ni... Socrates. Si? Si? Sino sa tingin yung pinaparinggan ni Plato rito sa the republic? Hindi niya pala pinaparinggan taasan niyang sinabi. Sino yung tinutuligsa niya rito? Ancient literature. Classic literature. Hula. Ha. Hula. Sino sa tingin niya yung pinapatabaan niya rito? Yeah, parang hindi kayo nag-aral ng history, <laughs> history ng literature. Politicians, sir. Si? Politicians. Politicians. <laughs> hindi. Si Homer. Homer. So, yung isa sa mga tinitinag isa sa mga examples niya rito at actually yun na pala isa the entire part of the republic in chapter 10 when you read it if you read it ah uh, mababasa niyo doon na talagang ang sinusuliksan niyo doon ay si Homer yung Iliad and Odyssey so, sa sabi niya yung mga works doon ni Iliad sa kanila Odyssey ni Homer are corrupting the mind of the public because what what, what were written there we're not part of the, the reality. Okay? Kasi nga, diba, si Plato is isang philosopher. Ang sa kanya, ang katotohanan lamang ay yung mga uh, the teachings from philosophy. Yun yung sinasabi ko sa inyo noong una, that there is a conflict between literacy and uh, oral literature. Kasi nga, diba, nagtatag si Plato ng isang paaralan, yung The Academy. Doon sa the academy, ang mga tinuturo niya doon, of course, mga philosophical things, mga wisdoms, mga uh, things that are mga knowledge. Okay, so mahilig kasi siya sa mga knowledge generation, to generate knowledge based on how we look at life. Okay, so yun yung mga tinag-aaralan ni Plato at tinuturo niya sa kanyang paaralan sa the academy. Until such time nga, that people are starting to believe on the things that were told to them, the things that, the, that people were extracting from the oral tradition, which was uh, proliferated by, by Homer, sa kanyang Iliad and Odyssey. Okay? Other than that, meron pang mga iba pang mga literary works, mga dramas. Okay? So, pag pinag-uusapan natin ang literature, kapag ang period natin ay classic literature, ang ating pinatutukoyan dito ay poetry. Liwanag ba? Poetry. Kasi yung time nila, the only form of literature that they considered as literature is poetry. Kahit yan pa isang drama, ang paraan naman ng pagbibigkas ay patula. Poetry pa rin. Kahit pa yun ay narrative, poetry pa rin. Kahit pa yung epic, di ba? We considered uh, the Iliad in the Odyssey as an epic poetry. So, poetry pa rin yung, yung presentation. Hence, the, the basis of Homer when he attacked literature during this time is from the perspective of poetry. And of course, drama. Kung naalala niya si Dionysus, yung presentation ni ang gula ng buhay ni Dionysus dito sa ating discussion ng drama. Okay? So, the whole aim of art is to deceive. Success is achieved when the spectator mistakes an imitation of reality. Art is a concern with morality. Kasi sabi ni Plato, puro ka immoralan, immoralan daw ang uh, mga poetry. Uh, parang totoo nga naman, di ba? Pagbabasahin yung Iliad and Odyssey, kung titignan nyo, may mga immorality. So, isa yung kaya tinutuling sa talaga ni, ni, ni Plato ya ang Iliad and Odyssey ni Homer. But still, meron pa rin naman siyang in-acknowledge 
on the work of Homer, but yet, yet, uh, ang focus ng kanyang critique, again, is literary criticism, kaya nga sinoconsider na isa sa mga kauna-unahang literary critique ay si, si Plato dahil sinulidsa niya talaga ang isang pamosong literature, katulad ng Iliad and Odyssey, na pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. Kasabi niya, sometimes even teaching a moral lesson as in the case of the Iliad and Odyssey. Ito na yung sinasabi sa inyo. Specifically, this will focus on the attack of poet, attack to poetry by Plato. I already mentioned this to you kanina that poetry is twice removed from reality and it makes men believe in the imperfection. So, kumbaga, kapag yan ang madalas na binabasa o napatakinggan ng mga tao, that's the, for them, is a false reality that the people will believe. So, mali yung kanilang mga natututunan according to Plato. Okay? Again, kung bakit ba natin sinabi na twice removed from reality? Una, it comes from idea. When the maker of the idea or when the person um, project the idea, ibig sabihin, Ako halimbawa, meron akong naisip na isang uh, na isang bagay. So, ginawa ko. At yung ginawa ko, may nagsulat about my life. So, twice to move from reality. Okay? Ito pa. The poet writes a poem not because he thought for a long time, but because he is inspired suddenly. So sabi niya, yung idea daw ng mga writers, kapag daw sila ay na may sinulat, hindi na naman daw yun dahil sa matagal nila pinag-isipan. Because suddenly, bigla na lang daw sila na-inspired. Okay? Mga, yung siya tawag natin mga uh, fiction, mga fictitious. And this suddenness, according to Plato, cannot be truthful. Okay? So, hindi raw lahat ng mga bigla na lang naisip natin dahil inspired tayo magsulat yun ang yung katotohanan. Okay? Kahit pa sabihin natin that was your idea, that was your original idea, pero kapag automatically sinulat mo yun o ginawa mo yan, according to it later, that suddenness cannot be considered as true. Okay? Poetry contains profound truths but poetry fails in the test of reason. Again, philosopher kasi niya, si Plato. So, gusto niya lagi, when we talk of ideas, it has to be philosophized. So, dapat lagi, ang uh, pinakang uh, ground niya ay yung philosophy. Hence, it cannot take the place philosophy, it cannot make better citizens. So, kaya siya talaga, pinopromote niya is philosophy, not literature. So, he is encouraging people to study philosophy but not focusing more on on arts because arts will not make you a better citizen poetry affects the emotions not the reason ayan si Plato pala ano no pinapairal utak hindi ang puso so it appeals to the heart not to the intellect ayan so Kapag kayo ay uh, na-influensyahan ni Plato at kayo ay umibig, alam nyo na. Mga puro ka, kung ano na mga philosophical insight ang mga pagsasabi nyo. <laughs> so, emotions are temporary and they cannot be safe guides to men. Okay? So, uh, kaya ang... Minsang pagkakilig, hindi ka na mahabang buhay ka ng kilig. Kapag nabasa mo o napanood mo isang palabas, hindi naman the entire life, kikiligin ka. Okay? Hindi naman the, your entire life, kaya uh, mamahalin ka. And however, if you do have that uh, knowledge or the ideas, yung talino, kumbaga, okay? so, you can have it for the rest of your life now, sabi ni Plato. Okay? So, marami palang hugot din tong si Plato. 
So yun nabanggit natin kanina, poetry is not moral in character. It treats both virtue and vice alike. Okay? It does not teach moral to the reader. It corrupts human beings. Ang bigat ng sinabi niya sa poetry. Okay? So, ayan. Ilan lang yun sa mga attacks niya. Okay? So, function of poetry according to Plato. Hindi naman siya talaga totally 100% against sa poetry. Pero para sa kanya, ito yung mga dapat na pinopromote ng isang poetry. Kasi nga naman, ang kanyang premise sa kanyang critique ay yung works ni Homer na Iliad of Odyssey na talagang tinatangkilik ng marami sa kanila. At yung mga tao during their time, we can assume we can assume na uh, probably they are being persuaded by the, uh, the content of the, the Iliad and Odyssey because of its popularity during their time and Homer, of course, is uh, famous during their time and uh, it's setting aside the value of philosophy which is promoted by, by Plato and the irony of it, yung isa sa mga magagaling ng estudyante na si Aristotle ay isa pala sa mga may iba rin pagtingin when it comes to poverty. Okay? So these are the sanctions of, uh, of poetry according to Plato. Poetry is not just it, it's not just to offer pleasure. It should teach some more. Later on, we discuss natin ano ba yung pleasure. Okay? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng pleasure? Ano bang pagtingin ni Plato sa pleasure? Okay? It should contribute to the knowledge. Kasi nga, philosophy, philosopher siya, at ang philosophy is contributing to knowledge. Ang gusto ni Homer, ganun din. It should not uh, harm, has an appeal to emotion, but it should have an appeal to intellect. A poet should also be a good teacher. Pero hindi pala good teacher si Homer. <laughs> Ayun ay assumption lang natin. Plato suggests truth as the test of poetry. Okay? A poet is a good artist only in so far as he is a good teacher. Okay? So, ito yung mga gustong iparating ni, ni, ni Homer, ay ni, ni, ni Plato. Kagad na kay Plato, di ba? Hindi siya yung basta lang bigay ng bigay ng criticism mo. Nagbigay din siya ng suggestion. And it makes sense on what literary criticism is all about. So you do not just attack and attack literary work, but you also give recommendations. Again, that makes sense of what literary criticism is all about. So ito yung mga, itong mga to, ang mga binibi, ito yung mga recommendations niya in order for us to 100% accept literature. Again, it was during their period. So, also, katulad na nabanggit ko kanina, when we talk of poetry, we're also talking about drama. Kasi, ang mga drama nung sinaunang panahon, during the ancient period, is told in a form of a poetic way. So, katula. So, kaya, ang tawag sa kanya specifically is a dramatic poetry. Okay? So, lang sa mga kilala dyan, ay yung mga works nila Eskilus, nila yung ano, Oedipus Rex, ni Sophocles. Yan, Oedipus Rex. Ito isa, isa yun sa mga very famous na, na drama during their time. Yung kay Sophocles na Oedipus Rex. Okay? Kasi there are only few works that were survived and one of which is the works of Eskilus and the works of Sophocles. No, kay Sophocles niya, yung Oedipus Rex. Alam naman natin yung kwento ng Oedipus Rex. At for sure, makakarelate tayo kung bakit tinutulig sa arin nito ni Plato. Okay. So, drama, according to Plato, is a branch of poetry. Just like what I mentioned, um, Drama during their time is presented in a poetic manner. Katula. Plato is against the pleasure of tragedy and comedy given. Okay. 
What is pleasure, anyone? What is pleasure? Personal desire. Yes, Melissa. Melissa, what is pleasure, Melissa? Personal desire. Personal desire. Okay. Personal desire. Desire. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Who else? That satisfies. Desire one that, that, that like satisfies. That. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. See? Satisfaction of desire. What else? What is pleasure? Hmm. Anyone? Sige, Russell. It's, I uh, wouldn't say pleasure, it is our enjoyment, sir. Enjoyment. It is uh, enjoyment. It is one thing that makes us feel good. That's why we want it. Or make we, us feel happy. Okay, happiness. Make us feel happy. Okay. Take niya sa happiness. Okay, so sabi ni, ni Louie, ni Kuya Lu, pleasure is the satisfaction of one's desire. Okay. Ito, tignan natin kung ano sabi ni Plato. Okay, so Plato built on the ancient common sense that connected pleasure with the satisfaction of self-longing or affective desire. Or in, in Greek term, epitumia and also on early scientific speculation. Equating pleasure with the, taking from this term, fulfillment of bodily needs. Okay? Fulfillment of bodily needs. Okay, Chris Pell, sabi niya, pleasure is what makes you happy. Okay, so, yung nakikitang, nakikitang pleasure ni ni Arsene, ni Plato, doon sa mga drama during their time, is only just a fulfillment of bodily needs. Pero para sa kanya, it should not be the pleasure that the viewers or that the uh, spectators must see from a drama. It should not only be a fulfillment of bodily needs. Hindi dapat yon. So, hindi yun yung pagkakaunawa. Ni, hindi yun yung paniniwala ni ni Plato when he talks of pleasure. Okay? It's not, it should not be fulfillment of bodily need. Tingnan natin kung ano ba talaga yung para sa kanya. Kasi yung nakikita niya doon sa mga drama is only just fulfillment of bodily need. Ito para sa kanya ang pleasure. Plato treats pleasure not as a sensation. Sensation when we talk of sensation, what do you mean by that? Sensation. Sensation. Hmm. Senses. Sensation. Senses. Senses, yes. Yes, senses. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, and what you touch. Favorite that and what you touch. <laughs> okay? So, sabi niya, it shouldn't be those things that are perceived by our senses. Katulad na di ba nang nabanggit natin? Balikan natin yung definition natin kanina. Ay, yung discussion natin ng Paulo Kanahan. Na sabi natin, yung material world. Material world are those things that are perceived by our senses. And those things that are perceived by our senses should not be the manifestation of what pleasure is. Because of, kasi nga si Plato, philosopher again, uh, instead, the pleasure must be the attitude which one ascribes value to the object. Para sa kanya, ang pleasure is yung nakukuha mong intellect, yung wisdom na nakukuha mo sa isang experiences. This for him is pleasure. Again, from the point of view of a philosopher, a pleasure is something that uh, will give you uh, wisdom that will give you knowledge, that will give you an intellectual value. Yun para sa kanya ang pleasure. Hindi yung mga fulfillment of bodily needs. Nakuha ba? Ganyan tingnan ni, ni Plato ang pleasure. So kapag ikaw ay nag-aral na nag-aral at marami kang nakuha doon sa iyong pinag-aaralan, that's pleasure for Plato. 
Pero kapag halimbawa ay basa ka ng basa, kung ka ng yun ng isang literary work, basa ka ng basa ng literary work. Pero ang na uh, ang na-achieve mo are those perceived by your senses. For him, that's his pleasure. Okay? Unless otherwise, there is wisdom that you get from this. Nakuha ba? Okay. So, kaya nga, Plato rejects all form of hedonism. You know, hedonistic, hedonism. It's not nothing hedonism, eh. It's something to do with the... Principle. Huh? Yes, Lem? Pleasure principle, sir. Yes, pleasure principle of hedonism. Hedonistic. Diba? Kaya tinutilig siya yung hedonism. Kasi nga, uh, ang sa mga... <laughs> Ang tinitingnan niya dyan, kung drama pinag-uusapan natin, ay ang Oedipus Rex. For sure naman, particular kayo sa plot structure ng Oedipus Rex, di ba? Okay? So, ganun yung tingnan yung, uh, yung kanyang uh, yung pleasure para sa kanya. Ito yung nakikita natin doon sa, sa katulad ng mga eksena sa Oedipus Rex. Okay? Um... Plato is also able to hold both that virtue is sufficient for happiness. That's why I want you to point out of what Russell mentioned about happiness. Because uh, for Plato, if you if you attain virtue or if you attain wisdom out from the things that you learn in life, that will give you a satisfaction. And that satisfaction is the happiness. Okay? And that pleasure is necessary for happiness. Not as an addition to one's virtue, but as a constituent of one's whole virtue's character itself. See? Kumbaga, uh, the more that you gain wisdom from the things in life, the more that gives you happiness. So, gano'n tignan ni Plato ang, ang, ang pleasure. Happiness that you get for the learnings in life that you get. And the knowledge and wisdom you get from those experiences that you have in life. Okay?